In this video, we'll go over four practice problems for the wastewater treatment operator certification exam. This video is for newer operators studying for the first two certification levels. What is the typical removal efficiency of settleable solids in a primary clarifier? 95 to 99%. First of all, what is removal efficiency? It's the percentage of waste removed from the wastewater. For example, in this case, if 100 settleable solids enter the primary clarifier, 95 to 99 of them settle to the bottom and were removed from the wastewater. Only one to five settleable solids left the primary clarifier in the effluent. Other common removal efficiencies that you should know for the primary clarifier are for suspended solids, which is 40 to 60%, and BOD, which is 20 to 50%. To learn more about it, go to the textbook, Operation of Wastewater Treatment Plants, Volume 1. And on page 129, they go over it in more detail. Which of the following is associated with thick billows of white sudsy foam in the aeration tank? High FM ratio. Thick billows of white sudsy foam in the aeration tank is encountered during the startup of a plant when the FM ratio is high. During startup, there aren't a lot of microorganisms inside the aeration tank, but there's plenty of food or BOD coming in. As a result of this imbalance, there aren't enough microorganisms to eat the available food, which ultimately leads to foaming. If we were to calculate the FM ratio for this scenario, the quantity of food that goes into the top of this formula will be large, but the quantity of microorganisms that go into the bottom of this formula will be small. When you do the math, this leads to a high FM ratio, which is associated with thick billows of white sudsy foam in an aeration tank. Another characteristic of this condition is that the aeration tank has young sludge, which means that the microorganisms haven't spent a lot of time in the aeration tank. So remember, thick billows of white sudsy foam in the aeration tank is associated with a high FM ratio and young sludge. To learn more about it, go to the textbook, Operation of Wastewater Treatment Plants, Volume 2. And on pages 53 and 75, they go over it in more detail. What impact does the injection of chlorine gas have on the pH of wastewater? Decreases pH. When chlorine gas is added to the wastewater, it decreases the pH, and I'll explain why. Acids are formed when chlorine gas is injected into the wastewater. We know that from the pH scale, acid has low pH. Therefore, if acids are being formed when chlorine gas is injected into the wastewater, the pH must decrease. It moves to the left on the pH scale. So remember, if chlorine gas is added to the wastewater, the pH decreases. To learn more about it, go to the textbook, Operation of Wastewater Treatment Plants, Volume 1. And on pages 349 and 350, they go over it in more detail. Which gas is the most abundant in a properly operating anaerobic digester? Methane. The digester gas is mostly methane. 65 to 70 percent of the digester gas is methane. The second most abundant gas in the digester is carbon dioxide at 30 to 35 percent by volume. The remaining 1 to 2 percent consists of gases such as hydrogen, nitrogen, and hydrogen sulfide. To learn more about it, go to the textbook, Operation of Wastewater Treatment Plants, Volume 2. And on page 158, they go over it in more detail.